We are. We are. We are cultivate. 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 We are cultivate. Hello and welcome to Yield Crime, where we discuss the funny, strange, and obscure crimes of yesteryear. I'm your host, Lindsay Valenti, and with me is my sister and co-host, Maddie Stengel. Hello. Hi. It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. How how long Mm -hmm. has it been since we've talked to each other? Two, three weeks? In terms of podcast talking, two weeks. Mm -hmm. So before we dive into it, I have... Two things. Uh oh. They're not corrections per se. So, one is a shout out to Tom for being our awesome solo patron, going strong. Love you, Tom. And secondly, shout out to our friend Dustin over at Sandman Stories Presents because he's the one that told me about today's topic. Nice. Today's topic is Thomas Derrick. Man with two first names. Yes. Okay. There isn't a third first name, so not a murderer? Mm, We'll get into it. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. This is going to be a fairly short one because, yeah, we'll just get into it. So, Because he only has two of the three required names to be a murderer. This is true. This is true. (laughs) (laughs) So... Information was pulled from the following sources, a 2012 Pegasus Vertex Incorporated article by Gefe Lu, sure, a 2010 Inky Fool article by Mark Forsyth, Daily Writing Tips article by Maeve Maddox, DBpedia, Listery, the National Portrait Gallery, What a Culture, and two Wikipedia links. Nice. And links to all of these articles will be included in the show notes. Got something you want to say? Shoot us an email over at yieldcrimepodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your story ideas, see any gifts you send our way, or if you just want to say hello. We're pretty friendly. Speaking of friendly, if you'd like to have real-time conversations with us, consider joining our Discord over at the Cultivate Network. You can chat with us over at the Old Crimers Cubby, or catch up with any of the other great creators that are part of the Cultivate family of podcasts. Just click the link in our show notes or over on our link tree to get started today. So today's topic is going to be a little different than what we usually cover in the sense that the subject of today's tale went on to become a word for something else entirely. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to get into it so I can explain. Thomas Derrick lived during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I and was an Englishman. Mm. For context, Queen Elizabeth I reigned from 1558 to 1603. Mm-hmm. Now, Derrick wasn't a great guy. Yeah. We wouldn't be talking about him if he was. Right. Most men from history weren't great, the ones that we talk about. Yeah. There's very few that like were pretty cool. But like even the cool ones also had most were mostly not great. Yeah. In fact, he was convicted of sexual assault and sentenced to hang. Awesome. I know. We're great. just we're just jumping right great into start. it. Okay. So not murder, but close. But close. However, okay. he was pardoned by the second Earl of Essex, a man named Robert Devereux, on the condition mm-hmm. that he become the hangman at Tyburn. So we won't let you hang if you hang other people instead? Yes. So to provide some context, no one in history would want to be a hangman or an executioner, and for various reasons. In English Mm -hmm. history, one wouldn't set out to be an executioner given the risk for retaliation from loved ones of those who were executed. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, like, if you're not, if you think about it, I doubt they really had like military barracks at the time. Like if you if you defended the crown, you just you still went home every day or like had a house or something. Like 
if you were an executioner, you would just go back to wherever you were. You weren't, you didn't have a lot of money. You were right. essentially a garbage person. They wouldn't care about you. Yeah. No. They were like, you're just a guy that didn't skip arm day. Yeah. <laughs> you're just a guy that didn't <laughs> skip arm day. <laughs> <laughs> it was also pretty easy to know who the executioner was, and additionally, how to find them. Yeah. That being said, many people who did wind up being executioners, more often than not, were forced to be them, such as the case of Thomas Derrick. Interesting. So that was kind of it. That was a death sentence in itself, almost. Mm hmm Well, good, <laughs> I guess. So. You jerk. For further context... I'm now going to tell you about Tyburn. So Tyburn, which was at the junction of two Roman roads, became a common place for criminal executions for not only the city of London, but also Middlesex, which is where the Tyburn gallows were located. Hmm. Okay. Prisoners set for hanging would be taken via a public procession from Newgate Prison in London via Tyburn Road to the gallows. The three miles, or five kilometers, would have been around an hour or so walk to your own execution. But at that time, since the streets would be so crowded with onlookers, the prisoner slash prisoners would be taken via a horse-drawn open cart. Still not great, like your survivability. Because at that point, they could absolutely like throw something at you and kill you. And because there were so many people, this procession could take like an hour per mile. So it could take up to three hours just yeah. to get there to hang. Yeah. Because like, what else are they doing? They're mm -hmm. not next. They're not Netflixing. They're not texting. Mm -hmm. This isn't a, you're not, you're not touring. You didn't go on vacation mm -hmm. really during this time, unless you were royalty. Yeah. So once they arrived at the gallows, a noose would be placed around their neck while they stood in the cart before the cart was literally pulled out from under them, leaving them hanging. Oh. So they wouldn't they wouldn't make a platform. No. They just made like the the bar. Yeah. The main bar then. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder when they started that then. When did they start the like the trapdoor thing? Yeah. Well maybe another another episode. <laughs> well, we're gonna continue on our history of hangings. So the first recorded execution at Tyburn Gallows took place in 1196 when a man named William Fitz Osbert, who led a revolt in London, was dragged naked behind a horse from London before he was hanged. Oh, that man had no skin on his back. Mm -mm. Or like maybe his whole body at that point. Yeah. Oh, I'm, ass I'm assuming he was probably like dead before he even got there and they were just like, well, we still have to yeah. do it. Yeah. It's a symbolic gesture at this point. Like, wow. Yeah. That would have been a horrific thing to see. Yeah. But granted, at that time, what's horrific? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah. What's the scale? I mean, I mean, what, what are we talking? You know, STDs on your face and noses falling off. And that was probably like children's, everywhere. children's programming at this point in history. Like, it yeah. was just like yep. nothing. Nothing. It was educational at that yeah. point. This yeah. is what happens when a man gets drugged behind a, a horse. This is a Tuesday. <laughs> this is a Tuesday before <laughs> dinner. Yep. yep. The Tyburn Tree was erected in 1571 near the junction of Edgar Gate, Bayswater Road, and Oxford Street. The quote-unquote triple tree was a new form of gallows that consisted of a horizontal wooden triangle held up by three legs. This new gallows set up allowed multiple criminals to be hanged at once, making Tyburn oh my God, so efficient. a popular location for mass executions. It was a popular destination for anyone into, into seeing gross things. I was thinking more like those like Hollywood star bus tours, where it's just like, and here is right? the site of our mass executions. Woo! Yep. You know, don't take any pictures. An example of this took place on June 23rd, 1649, when 23 men and one woman were hanged simultaneously after being sent there in eight separate carts. Terrifying. No. Yeah. Nope. Following executions at Tyburn, the bodies would either be buried nearby or find themselves taken by anatomists for dissection. 
Sometimes people attending the executions would fight with anatomists to prevent them from taking the bodies because, you know, resurrection and judgment day and you kind of need to be whole for that to work, allegedly. Yeah. So I guess if if the person that was murdered, this is going to sound horrible, was loved, (laughs) they would want to keep their bodies. Yep. But if they were not. It was kind of like, it's up for grabs. Yeah. Do what you want to do. The first recorded victim of the Tyburn tree, remember the one that's like the triangle now with Mm -hmm. all the things, was a Roman Catholic named John Story, who was convicted for committing acts of treason. The gallows themselves had to be replaced several times over the years due to natural wear and tear. And it wasn't until October of 1759, almost 200 years after it was originally erected, that the decision was made to replace the permanent gallows with a new one that could be moved to different locations. They used the same tree for 200 years? This, yeah, they called it a tree, but it was really like... I know it's not like an actual tree. But yeah, they but... used the same one for three hundred for 200 years, yeah. Okay, so where is that so I could never be there again? I don't... <laughs> where are the remains of this horrific, super haunted, bad juju, nightmare wood? <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that. Does it still exist? Do pieces of it still exist? No. There's something like marking the spot, but it doesn't exist anymore. No. Good. It's actually in hell. Like once they were done, it it just like was resorbed. Reabsorbed into the earth. earth. It just burst into flames and like slowly sank. It's like, I'll take this. I'll take this. It's fine. I got some guys down here that have used it before. (laughs) It was like the Terminator. It just like gets slowly gets eaten by the, the liquid hot magma. It's fine. Can you imagine? Oh my god. So horrific. Two hundred years. That, okay. Honestly, though, shout out to the person that made that. The people that built that. Good on you. Like, I mean, they had to only... like repair it and replace parts of it yeah. throughout that throughout that time. But still, two hundred years. Two hundred years, and it was wood, and during a time when fire was, you know, it ran rampant. A problem all the time. <laughs> New York City marathons ain't got nothing on fire in the Middle Ages. Like, no, no. That shit was everywhere. Hey. That made no sense. It's fine. So, it's fine. (laughs) It's fine. We're like feral today. It's okay. (laughs) We're (laughs) relearning how to podcast. It's fine. Yeah, I'm relearning how to talk. It's fine. Now, back to Thomas Derrick. He became executioner at Tyburn sometime around 1608. So that was like five years after Queen Elizabeth I reign. And Tyburn was the place where criminals, traitors, and religious dissenters would be sent to die. Now, during his time as executioner, Derek is believed to have executed more than 3,000 people. That's three zeros after the three. Okay. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he was, if he already had any humanity in him before this job is probably like super gone, gone by so that gone. point so gone you know because i mean i mean assault on an, a sexual assault on a person that's pretty bad but yeah you're you're pretty inhumane at that point but like damn his humanity was like a bird it only flew away yeah didn't know where it's it actually is. a crow that picked at the bodies on on the tree his name was jack And a somewhat ironic twist of fate. One of the people he had to execute was the very man who had pardoned him in the first place, the Earl of Essex, Robert Devereux. Unlike the others, because Robert was royalty, he was executed at Tower Green on February 25th, 1601, and it took Derek three times swinging the axe before he was actually able to behead the Earl. So he did skip arm day, is what you're saying. Yeah, he wasn't very good at arm day. He really let himself go. Since yeah, he did. They last met. Yeah, yeah. Day. Or he did that on purpose. Maybe. Yeah, three times. Maybe. He might have done it on purpose. Yeah. Fun fact, Robert Devereux also became the last person to be executed on Tower Green in the Tower of London. Yeah, pro- yeah, because I bet that was super not cool to fun to fun to see. Super not cool to see. They were like, you know... I think maybe we're good. We just, maybe we just keep this in the country like I before. Think we're good. That tree is super nice. We should just use the tree. Yeah. So much cleaner. So much cleaner. So much easier to clean like, the grass. 
Anywho, Thomas Derrick <laughs> was so well known as an executioner that his name became synonymous with the act of hanging. In fact, during his time at Tyburn, as we've mentioned, hangings were carried mm -hmm. out by hanging a rope over a beam where the person would be suspended after the cart was rolled out underneath him. Right. Well, Thomas was a bit of an inventor, and he modernized this process by adding a topping lift and pulleys to the horizontal beam, making it easier to lift and lower the condemned person following their execution. Oh, I hate how innovative he was. This new modernized way to hoist and move dead bodies became known as a derrick. The term derrick has two meanings according to the Oxford Dictionary. A kind of crane with a movable, pivoted arm for moving or lifting heavy weights, especially on a ship, or the framework over an oil well or similar boring that holds the drilling machinery. So you know when you see the oil, the things in the yeah. oil well? Yeah. That's, that's a called derrick. a derrick? That's a derrick. I hate all of this. Wow. Well, this man has too much power and death. As a last fun fact, the last okay. execution at Tyburn took place on November 3rd, 1783, when highwayman John Austin was put to death. Following this, hangings would take place outside Newgate Prison for the next 85 years, until 1868, when they moved the executions inside the prison. Mm. When the Victorians were like, listen, this was like cool, but we have radio now. Well, we don't need remember, this. I can't remember what episode it was specifically, but there was an episode previous to this where I did cover executions at Newgate. Mm -hmm. and remember that one? Where, did. Like, it was really, it, it was one of the first ones, I think. It wasn't it was one of the first ones, but it was early. And remember the yeah. one where the guy like fell, but because he didn't have the noose on his neck, he had to walk back up so he could be hung again. Like he had yeah. just fallen out of the trap door and then he had to walk himself yep. back up to be hung. That was at Newgate. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like not. I think that was one of the last ones crazy. where they were like, maybe we should do this inside next time. <laughs> maybe this is. Because people were horrified. <laughs> It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. Yeah. For, for everyone involved. Wasn't that great? Yeah. So that's uh, Thomas Derrick and the term Derrick. I hate it. Thank you for that. You're that was, welcome. That was awful. Thanks, Dustin. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dustin. <laughs> if you want a playlist of all our episodes on YouTube, Click the link in our show notes or in our link tree and subscribe today for not only a list of our full catalog, but a separate list as well, just of our Can You Crack the Cramp Word segments. Hey, Ann Barner. Hey, Karen Beatty. We need a promo. You know, like where we talk about what we do on our podcast. On our sugar-coated murder podcast? Like how we love to bake and talk about murder? That's what we need to talk about. There you go. I think we've talked about it. Y'all find us on all your favorite listening apps. Stay sweet. And don't murder. Because if you kill people, we will talk about you. So this week's podcast plug is the Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Sisters Ann Varner and Karen Devaney discuss true crime while baking, combining sweets with true crime improv to create a unique and entertaining podcast. New episodes are released every Friday, and they are part of the Believe Network. Nice. Good job, ladies. Sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. And we have a listener question this week. Oh my God. I'm ready for it. Okay. This is from our friend Emily from the Drink Drunk Dead and Pineapple Pizza podcast. Hi. And she wants to know what are your top three favorite cereals? Oh, damn. Oh, damn. I don't eat a lot of cereal anymore. I don't either. But I will say so we. We got, like, at Sam's Club, they had, like, the spooky cereal pack. Mm-hmm. Blueberry? Delicious. It's blueberry-flavored sweet sweetened rice. Mm-hmm. And marshmallows. It's delightful. I really like that one. They have a cherry version that's pretty good, but I don't know if that would be my top three. So I'm going to put... Oh, man. I think it's going to be blueberry frosted flakes... Because I feel like they, they really keep their crunch. It, yeah. You know. You eat them fairly quickly, pretty, yes. And you don't put too much milk. Mm -hmm. You really let them soak. It gets gross. 
And the third one, oh, what's it called? Describe it to honey me. Smack? No, it's not sugar, honey. Sugar Smacks? Sugar Smacks? Is it Sugar Smacks? It's like the little, the little. Does it have the frog on it or does it have the bear on it? Oh, I don't know. But it, it was like nugget looking, like kernel looking. Yeah. It's either Golden Crisp or Honey Smacks, depending on. I think we were a Golden Crisp household. We were a Golden right. Crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Golden Grams. Don't insult me. <laughs> Don't Golden Grams me. Disgusted. I was thinking while you were saying yours. So so reiterate yours for the listeners. So it's. Okay. So blueberry, Frosted Flakes, and Golden Crisp. Okay. Honey Crisp. Golden Grams. Honey Crisp. No. Not Golden, golden Grams. Gr- golden Crisp. It's not gold. But it, when I look up Golden Crisp, it, it doesn't. It? Golden yeah, crisp. No, it is golden crisp. Yeah, golden yep. crisp. It's got sugar bear on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mine are Honey Nut Cheerios. Okay. Classic. I do really like Kick cereal. I don't know why. Interesting. Something about it. I, I like the, the berry flavored one, like Berry Berry Kick, yes. whatever it's called. I like that one. That one was the, nice. other one's just The other one's just boring because it's just corn, corn flavored. Yeah. Cereal. There was a girl in kindergarten that had the regular one and she would hide it in her desk and put glue on the little (gasps) pieces and eat it like just a little dollop like a drop of glue and so I could never eat that cereal after that because I just associated it with glue (laughs) oh so okay so I have honey nut cheerios berry berry kicks and I I love lucky charms Okay. I will always love Lucky Charms, but those are my top three cereals. Nice. I really like Cracklin' Oat Bran, but it cuts my mouth. I love Cracklin' Oat Bran. I'm also super regular. (laughs) It's so good. I don't know why. It's actually not very fibrous. Like, there's really no point to it. It's just really aggressive, crunchy. Like, it's not a circle. It's not a square oat. (laughs) I like honey bunches of oats for the same reason. It's got like a bunch of different textures. It's good. It's nice. It does cut up your mouth a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Kind of messes with your mouth. That's why I couldn't do Captain Crunch. Because Captain Crunch, like the the flavor is great, but it really cuts your mouth. It cuts up your mouth and then it leaves a film behind. Yeah. And Reese's Puffs, I don't like the film. Mm Mm-mm either oh, it's thanks. never Reese's Puffs is never as satisfying as you want it to be yeah. I don't know why I don't know if it's just not enough peanut butter or what what's something good you'd like to share oh man well I'm testing it out right now but I was gifted a heated coat Ooh. it has a portable heat setting and and you press this button and it has four heat settings so it's 100%, 75, 50, and 25%. And it's just on like one little portable charger that you can mm-hmm. charge. And if it's 25%, it lasts like eight hours. And then six, four, and like two and a half or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's so nice because where where I sit, where my desk is, it's just cold. We have really high ceilings. And the heat rises. And so there's only a finite amount of time where I can like tolerate being at my desk with my two screens. Mm -hmm. So I was just complaining about being cold this week in particular because it got kind of cold earlier. Mm -hmm. And so this was on sale. And so we're trying it out. I don't know what the brand is. It's not a fancy brand. It's like a nice aesthetically pleasing plaid. So that's Mm -hmm. nice. And it buttons and it's the snap buttons Ooh, nice i also appreciate the snap and it's got like a silky quilted inside so if you get too hot you're not like super sweaty Mm -hmm. i think but yeah i really like it it's nice nice so i'm just like cozy in it which is great that's my good thing how about you i mean last week was kind of cool yeah so last week i was in canada with our parents we went to the wedding of one of our cousins, one of our Canadian cousins. I got to have my friend Alex from Weird Distractions as my plus one for the 
Western ceremony, which was fun seeing her. And it was really cool being in a different country. But definitely by day four, I was like, I'm ready to go home. Mm -hmm. It got to be a bit much. It was nice seeing everybody. Beautiful ceremonies. Yeah, I can't really think of a whole lot. But Well, right. You don't want to talk about it too much because you don't want to expose our Canadian cousins or whatever, like geolocate them. I will say the town that the wedding was in was very cute. It was a little town. And shout out to the people over at the Purple Bike coffee shop because it was a very cute place. The people there were very nice. And nice. It was really good coffee. So if you look up the Purple Bike on Instagram and you happen to be in, it's Brussels, Ontario. So you can pretend when you tell your friends you went to Brussels, you can pretend you went to Belgium, but you're actually still in Ontario. All right. Ready? Yes. If you're interested in ad-free content, consider supporting us with a one-time donation either over on Buy Me a Coffee or our Venmo page, both of which are in our link tree and in the show notes. If you'd like early ad-free content, not to mention some bonus material, become a member of our Patreon today for as low as a dollar a month. All right. A great way to support the show if you want to help us out but can't do so financially is to leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Good Pods, Podcast Addict, and or Audible. Looking for more content? You can find us online at yieldcrimepodcast.com. If you'd like to see pictures from this week's episode, not to mention bonus content and funny memes, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Yield Crime Pod and on Facebook and Instagram at Yield Crime Podcast. On TikTok, of course you are. Follow us at Yield Crime Podcast. We also have several sales this month over at our Tea Public shop. You can get 35% off November 9th through the 19th. So this week. You will be mm -hmm. able to get some, and then you can get up to 40% off on Black Friday. So November 20th through Ooh. the 28th. So I'm going to try and do my best to get out. some new, yeah, to get some new merch up there. So hopefully you can find something you want in time for the holidays. You should do the, he didn't skip arm day. He didn't skip arm day and put like an ax there. Yeah, I should do that. On that note, as always, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Madison. And we'll see you next time with another tale as old as crime.